So guys, today I'm going to be talking about how I make camera So guys, in this pair of four tips video, it's going to be geared a little bit more toward photographers and videographers and pretty much anyone else that uses cameras and camera straps. And today I'm going to be talking about how I make camera straps for DSLRs and just generally cameras that use this is like before straps. I go into uh, how to make them I kind of want to go into why I make them or why I was prompted to start and this is of course the original Nikon strap you can see and the primary reason why I decided to do the paracord was that this securement system it was pretty good for a while and then after about like a few months of using it really brought me to using the paracord or going over to that system is that while I was walking out my deck this, uh, this system, system right here and this is kind of how it works it slips up into this little piece of plastic and it actually slipped out on one side and the camera actually ended up falling onto the wood on the deck and it didn't break anything luckily but I was not gonna let that happen again because I didn't want to break the camera body itself but I really did not want to break the glass that's on the camera um, so I was like enough with this strap and this faulty mechanism here and so I devised a way to unfortunately I will not be building this one for you guys just because this takes up a lot of paracord and I really only have one camera and this is its strap and I don't really want to redo it but I will talk to you guys how I made this. To start off, this is this may look all like one piece, but this is actually three pieces. And the first piece is this one, and the second piece is this. And what I mean is, you guys can see, this independently moves. These are two independent pieces, these little uh, orange pieces here. And these are what actually connect to the camera body. And sorry I can't show that better. Uh, the camera that I'm filming with is the camera that this usually sits on. Um, but these are two independent pieces. Like I said, they move freely, or at least this one moves freely. And how I made this was that I took a 20-foot section of cord here, and I did a fuse. As you guys, I think you guys can see there, I fused these two pieces together. So I did a gray camo with orange, and I did 10 foot of each, and then of course fused it in the middle. And then to affix it to the first piece here, I did a cow hitch or cow hitch, a really simple hitch you guys can see, hopefully. And so that affixed it there. And then what I did to affix it to the second one is I did just a standard cobra weave. It looks a little weird from this point, but I did a cobra weave to actually put it on this piece here. And then I just started doing the cobra stitch all the way down until I ran out. I actually did run out. A little early you guys can see there's about like three and a half inches maybe four there that I didn't do so if I was doing this again I would probably recommend maybe like 25 to 26 feet here because what I kind of forgot to take into account is that this weaving section or what I was weaving with also was the core and so there's about two and a half feet of core length here and so I would recommend approximately, you know, 25 to 26 feet of your coloration. I would probably recommend breaking it up into two colors because that's a lot of paracord for just one. But that's how I did it. And then after that, to secure it to the camera, I just used, or I just threaded these pieces through the uh, mount points on the camera and if you guys have a camera you'll know what I mean. I just did simple overhand knots to secure it and so that would be reasonably easy to remove but if you wanted absolute security you could also do diamond knots here and that would pretty much guarantee that this would not come off. The, the diamond knots would pretty off. much be an ultra secure method. I found that you don't really need it because these knots have not slipped on me but that's how I do it. Um, uh, this is a far been... better method. There is a little bit less here as far as width goes for padding, but honestly, it's so long as you're wearing a shirt or a coat or a jacket, uh, it's really only about a quarter of an inch thinner. And this is just doing this weave, uh, the Cobra, with this system. Of course, this is a core, so if you want to do something more complex, I would just recommend if you do something more complex, 
account for the fact that it may take up more paracord, so you may need 30 to 40 feet of paracord instead of 26. Um, but you can do really anything, and you could make it as wide as that if you really wanted to uh, with a different weave. But this is pretty good. Um, I found that this width, like I said, I wear coats 100% of the shirts. time I'm using a camera, so it's not really an issue for me. I don't find this digging into me that bad, and it's been a lot durable. It's been a lot more durable, and as you guys can see with the orange, if I ever misplace the camera, there's so much orange here. That was kind of what I was going for that I'm pretty much always going to be pretty helpful because it. the camera itself is brown and the lens is black and the tripod is black so having this nice splash of orange does help me if I should ever misplace the camera this really stands out well really either side there's a lot of orange here so so guys that's how I make different straps for cameras this is my favorite method I think you can probably make this all out of one continuous piece but I think breaking up into three pieces works the best. That's the best way I could think of how to do it uh, without taking out too much paracord. You really want to watch how much actual core you're going to weave because, like I said, you'll have to factor that in. Another reason why I chose to have two pieces down here is, as you can see, this is pretty flexible, but being that there's a weave in it, it won't be as flexible as just standard core. So I kind of wanted this piece here to be able to flex a lot. Um, being on any application because I usually throw this over my shoulders a lot um, So I wanted these two pieces closest to the camera to be completely flexible and unwoven So that's kind of why I went with that um, But anyways guys, it's completely up to you if you guys follow this plan or this design at all I would highly recommend doing this if you guys are using just standard straps from the makers because it appears that even Canon is no better with the same kind of mechanisms and like I said, if you don't want to end up actually slipping and falling out and hitting the wood and so that really sucked or the camera did and so I highly recommend using this system and that's how I make straps for cameras. I'm out.